This is going to be John chapter 3, and we're going to look at what will you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Number one, work with him. John 3, 22 says, After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And that's a good proof for full immersion for baptism. Because why else would John go baptizing in a place where there's much water? So, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized... And you may not think about this much, but John had his ministry going at the same time Jesus Christ had his ministry going. John was baptizing while the disciples of Jesus were also baptizing. And if you look at the next chapter in John chapter 4 and verse 2, it lets us know the disciples did the baptizing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though John had his ministry going and was baptizing as well, there was no competition. John was working with Jesus Christ, not against Jesus Christ. He wasn't worried about being the greatest. He wanted Jesus Christ to be the greatest. And we should also be constantly working for Jesus Christ in some form or fashion. Because Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, we aren't saved by works or kept saved by works. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we have an example from John and the disciples and the Apostle Paul to work for the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe you can't get out and work much physically for the Lord Jesus Christ, but the Bible says much study is a weariness to the flesh. It talks about laboring in the word and doctrine. It says in 2 Timothy 2.15, To study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can work by studying the words of God. In Luke 22.44, Jesus Christ, Christ prayed so hard that his sweat was as great drops of blood. Praying is also working for God. It is hard work to get on your knees and pray and to pray for long periods of time. Second Corinthians six one says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Notice that says workers together with him. We should work together, work for the Lord Jesus Christ. And while a changed life isn't required for salvation, why wouldn't you want to do good works and show others who it, who it is that's living inside you? And if John was jealous of the ministry of Jesus, then he wouldn't have been preaching Jesus. He would have ha had been trying to make people think he was smart and that he had it all figured out. But remember, he said, He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. So, John knows who's before him. He knows that he's under Jesus Christ. He's not equal with Jesus Christ. Uh, John was born before Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, but he knows that Jesus Christ is God, and in that sense, he was bef Jesus Christ was before John because Jesus Christ has always been here. Uh, but John was not out for himself. The ones today who are out for their self, they're not out for the Lord Jesus Christ. They're the ones who are envying and causing strife among other Christians. And that is why the Bible says where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And notice that word again, work. We need to be working with Jesus Christ. Because there's evil workers. The devil ha has his evil workers going out. And Paul says, beware of evil workers. There are some busy, wicked people. And there are some wicked people who are more busy than some lazy Christians. Some Christians are working not at all, but are busy buddies, as Paul says. So number one, what shall we do with Jesus? Work with him. And number two, what shall we do with Jesus? Suffer with him. 
John 3, 23 and 24 says, And John also was baptizing in Anan into Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Jesus Christ was the suffering Savior. Uh, he was hated by the world, and if you preach Jesus, then the world will hate you as well. And if we don't preach Jesus, then we're not going to be suffering with him. And you're not going to suffer if you preach the Hollywood Jesus, the Hollywood Jesus. Uh, John suffered with Jesus Christ because he preached the Jesus Christ that was there, the Jesus Christ of the Bible. And he was cast in prison for doing this because he preached and taught the real Lord Jesus Christ to others. Second Timothy 2.12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. In Second Timothy 3.12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you live godly and preach Jesus Christ, you're going to suffer persecution, whether it be from your family, people at work. You may not be martyred for the faith yet, but there's always some form of persecution that every Christian will go through. And Jesus Christ suffered because he loved us, so let's suffer with him because we love him. We love him because he first loved us. Uh, 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. He hath once suffered for sins. And we might as well suffer down here and lose our, our life down here because you get everything up there when you go to be with the one who suffered for you. Romans 8.18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So whatever you're going to face down here can't even compare to what you're going to get over there. So the next time you feel like you need to sin, fight the temptation knowing that if you can just endure this temptation you're going to get a re reward for it in the world to come something that's eternal and not temporal like the things on this world and to top it off if you suffer with him you get a, a better eternity first peter 4 16 says yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify god on this behalf so don't be ashamed if you suffer for Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed. Count it a blessing to suffer shame for his name. Count it a blessing to be counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And you may not go to jail like John did, but you suffer in the workplace when the co-workers make fun of you. You suffer at school and get made fun of because of your King James Bible. You may have a hard time at home because your family isn't Christians or they're worldly Christians. And you don't have to go to prison for the faith or die as a martyr to suffer with God. Anyone can suffer for him. It just happens. It just comes along with serving him. You don't need to force it. You don't have to force it. You, you don't bail your... Um, you don't have to nail yourself on a cross and inflict pain on yourself to suffer with Jesus Christ like some people do. That's just foolish. Suffering for Jesus Christ is something that just comes naturally when you work for Jesus Christ. So number one, work with Jesus. Number two, you suffer with Jesus. And number three, what shall you do with the Lord Jesus Christ? You should give him the glory. John 3, 25 says, Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came to John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all, and what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. 
He that hath received his testimony hath set his seal that God is true. So you see these wicked men were coming to John and trying to get him jealous of Jesus Christ. They said, all men come to him. But that is exactly what John the Baptist wanted. He came to manifest Jesus Christ to Israel. He was glad they were going to Jesus Christ and not to him. And those wicked Pharisees were trying to cause division. And they were being talebearers trying to cause strife. They were carnal and they walked in the flesh. They were out for their own glory. Uh, they sought their own. They didn't seek the things of Jesus Christ. But John didn't look into what they were saying. He just gave God the glory. He said, He must increase, but I must decrease. And if Jesus Christ is going to get the glory, then you're going to have to decrease. And all these guys with the personality cults have increased their self above Jesus Christ. Uh, a lot of these guys you watch on YouTube that are mean and they're causing envy and strife, they've put themselves up on a pedestal themselves and all these little people are just worshiping them. And that man is getting the glory, not the Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul teaches us in his epistles concerning Jesus that in all things he, Jesus Christ, might have the preeminence. But a lot of these guys don't take heed to what Paul said and they are like Diotrephes who loveth the preeminence, or the, what John said. He talks about Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence. Uh, they don't care if Jesus Christ gets the glory. They want the glory. They want to be the greatest. John said in verse 31, He that cometh from above is above all. He said in verse 27, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. He knew anything he got from God and anything bad he got was because he was a wretch and didn't deserve anything good anyway. Uh, but anything good he got, he knew it came from God. Uh, Paul also gave God glory to God. Paul worked for God. Therefore, he ended up suffering with him. And through all this, he gave God the glory. If you look at 2 Corinthians 12, 5 through 9, it says, Of such in one will I glory. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities. Paul didn't glory in himself, and he knew all the bad things that were happening to him were because of the sins he had committed. He didn't blame God, and he didn't blame other people. He blamed himself. So work with Jesus Christ. Suffer with Jesus Christ. Give all the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And next, make sure you hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.29 says, He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom that standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. Uh, John was before Calvary. And... He wasn't part, a part of the bride of Christ, John the Baptist, but he was a friend of the bridegroom, as the verse says. He knew his voice. And John ten twenty seven says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you're going to work, suffer, and glorify God, then you have to hear his voice. If you're going to suffer with Jesus Christ, work with Jesus Christ, and glorify Jesus Christ, you're going to have to hear his voice. And I love there's this one picture. You've probably seen it and it shows a man that wants to talk to God. And then right next to it is another picture. And it shows God's hand coming out of the clouds holding a black book towards the man who wants to talk to God. Saying, if you want to talk to me, then here's my book. And today, if you're going to hear his voice, you have to get in the book. You talk to God through prayer and he talks to you through a King James Bible. Reading a new version of the Bible would be like trying to talk to God with bad signal 
because you won't really know what he said. If you have read the Bible and listened to what God said, then you know one day you are really going to hear his voice. In 1 Thessalonians 4, it talks about how the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and he will say, Come up hither. And he is the God of all comfort. He wants you to comfort one another with these words. He is always saying, He that hath an ear, let him hear. If you hear what he says, then you will get comfort in all your working and suffering for God. Now last, but definitely not least, what shall you do with Jesus? Believe on his name. John 3.34 says, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Jesus Christ is the only person ever to have the Holy Spirit working through him in every moment that he was alive. God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. There was never a time when Jesus Christ sinned or didn't have the Holy Spirit working through him. But there's times when we don't have the Holy Spirit working through us. John 3.35 says, The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Uh, Jesus has the whole world in his hands. Satan is the God of this world, so Satan is under the control of Jesus Christ. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If you haven't believed on Jesus Christ to save you, then you can't do any of the other things mentioned in this study. You presently have the wrath of God abiding on you. You are going to have to believe the gospel. Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, and he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ died and shed his blood on the cross so that you could believe on him. And believing on him is different than believing in him. Because that's just a head knowledge. Just knowing Jesus Christ existed is not the same as trusting in him. You have to trust in him to save you. If you are believing on him, then you have your trust placed on him and his finished work on the cross to take away your sins and save your soul from hell. If you only believe in him, then you have a knowledge of who he is and you may or may not be trusting in him to save you. I've got my faith on him and on him alone. And the verse said in verse 36 that if you don't believe on him, then the wrath of God is presently abiding on you. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So what do you have to do to be saved? Do you know you're a sinner? Do you know you're going to hell? If you do, then the Holy Spirit told that to you. And that means you can be saved. And the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins on the cross. He shed his blood. He was buried and rose again the third day. And he did that as the payment for your sin. And if you'll believe on him as your payment for sin, then all those sins are paid for and they're gone, and they're never coming back, and you can go to heaven. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are, and believe on him before it's entirely too late.